has been neutralized. Hey 8-Bit Junkies, in a previous video I showed that it's possible to remove and replace the LCD screen on a Game Boy DMG using a hot air rework technique. However, in doing so, I found it difficult to perform without melting the plastic bracket that holds the screen in place. In this video, I will demonstrate an alternative method that is much easier and safer, and that anyone with a soldering iron and basic skills can do. Start by disassembling the Game Boy. Remove the two screws that align the LCD flex connector. Next, straighten the retaining clip pins. and push the non-soldered side of the clip up through the PCB from the bottom and pull it through from the top. I'll be using a product called ChipQuick to desolder the LCD connectors. ChipQuick is a very low melting point alloy designed for desoldering multi-pin components without damaging them. I purchased this kit from Amazon for about $15. Be careful if you look for similar, cheaper products on eBay or the like. Some of them contain alloys, which may contain metals like cadmium, which is extremely toxic. The kit contains a length of low temp solder, which should be enough to remove several screens. Additionally, it comes with a no clean flux and some cleaning wipes. I mount the LCD board and a PCB holder. Next I'll apply flux to the pins. With my trusty Heiko soldering iron set to about 350 degrees C, I'll melt an ample amount of chip quick onto the pins. One of the characteristics of chip quick is that it remains molten over a wide range of temperatures, so it stays liquid across the connector as I move the iron back and forth. I'm working the chip quick back and forth to get it distributed, and you can see the connector wanting to come up. The pins on the left seem to want to stay put though, so I'll continue to apply heat to them. I think that the retaining clip was acting as a heat sink which was preventing the pins closest to it from coming loose. So I'll add some more chip quick to the clip, apply more heat, and pull it out. With the clip out of the way, I'll now be able to free the connector. However, the flux I originally applied has been used up, so I'll apply some more. Now everything gets molten readily and the connector is easily freed by moving the soldering iron back and forth across it. Ta-da! I'm holding the cable up to prevent it from touching the board because the chip wick is still molten. It's amazing how long it'll stay that way. Once it solidifies, I can let go. I'm now able to lift the LCD assembly. I'll lift it up and to the right to expose the second connection underneath. Be careful here as the inner cable is quite delicate. Just like with the first connection, I'll apply an ample amount of flux. There are also one or two alignment screws to remove. I'll apply the chip quick and move the soldering iron across. And just like that, the cable is released. So there you have it, our screen is now free. To replace the screen, first I'll need to remove all of the chip wick from the board and from the connectors. I'll be using soldering braid, also called solder wick, to soak up the chip wick. I find this important to use a good brand of wick as the cheap stuff doesn't work well at all. I heat the chip wick and get it to ball up in one place to make it easier to wick, then heat the wick so that the solder will wet into it. With the bulk of it cleaned up, I'll go back over each pad to make sure the connection is really clean. I do the same thing with each of the flex connectors, being careful as they are a bit delicate. And as you can see, this one cleaned up quite nicely.
You can see very well here that it's the heat applied to the braid which causes the solder to wick into it. Now that I've cleaned up all of the chip wick, I just need to clean off the spent flux. I'll use some Kim Wipe soaked in 90% isopropyl alcohol to clean off the flux. Touch up as required and clean any remaining flux as clean surfaces make for good solder joints. To install the screen, first I'll screw the inside flux connector back down. This screw helps to align the pins. This Game Boy only had one screw installed, but yours may have two. Make sure the pins and pads line up straight, then tack down one of the pins. Just the residual solder on there was enough. I applied more of the chip quick flux, however, I was a bit skimpy with it and later I found that it doesn't seem to work that well with regular solder. You can see here I'm having trouble getting the solder to flow well. And very quickly I developed a bridge. So I got out my trusty rosin based flux. It's a pain to clean up, but it works really well. After a first pass, these may be soldered okay, it's hard to see, but really it doesn't look that great. So I cleaned up the flux, applied fresh flux, and went back for a second pass. Now that looks really good. With the inside connection done, I flipped the screen back into place and screwed the flux back down. The retaining clip helps align the cable, so I'll reinstall it first. It's a bit fiddly to get in there. Once it's back in, bend the leads over to hold it in place. Apply rosin flux and solder the connector. Even with good flux, occasionally we'll end up with bridges, but that's okay. It's easy to go back with some braid and clean up the bridges. I need to solder the clip back into place and I also want to do a second pass on the pins with some fresh flux even though I probably don't need to. But the result is a really nice looking job, neat and tidy. With the screen reinstalled, now all I have to do is reassemble the Game Boy and see if the screen still works. Ta-da! There you have it folks, the once thought impossible DMG screen swap is now easy enough for anyone to do. While there are no readily available sources of DMG replacement screens to make this technique useful for repairing damaged DMGs, this technique could be very useful for performing backlight mods. You get full access to behind the screen to be able to remove the reflective coating with no risk of damaging the back ribbon cable. 
I've included links to all of the tools and the music used in this video in the description below. If you purchase anything using those links, I will receive a small amount of compensation at no cost to you, which will help me to make more content. Be sure to give this video a thumbs up or down and subscribe to the channel if you'd like. If you do subscribe, click on the bell icon to make sure you are notified when the next video is released. If there's something you'd like me to make a video about, be sure to leave it in the comments. And if you have music you'd like to have featured in a future video, please contact me.